You can be seated, get your Bibles out, and let's turn to Genesis chapter 26. I'm going to get right to the Word of God tonight. Keep interceding. Dr. Putnam, it's good to have you back. Just not the same without you. Genesis chapter 26. I want to talk to you tonight about the spirit of perpetual revival. Well, maybe I ought to talk about finances or something. Y'all aren't too excited about that. No, I just, you need this, you need this. Glory to God, we just need this. I'm talking about the spirit of perpetual revival. In Genesis chapter 26, beginning with verse 17. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. Turn to your neighbor and say it makes a difference where you dwell. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Now just pause there for a minute and let's just get in the flow of what the Word of God is saying. Number one, the enemy had stopped up the wells. The wells are the source of life. You cap off the wells and your prosperity is capped off. And Isaac is going again to dig the wells that Abraham had dug. And I want you to notice something. It says that he called them by the name that Abraham had called them. He had a personal knowledge of how to get to these wells and he knew what they were called. I'm talking to you tonight because some of you have had your well stopped up by the enemy. dryness there's a spirit of dryness in the land you know and sometimes it gets on the church see revival church has some dryness some dry people yeah there can be dry people in revival church there can be dry people in revival service there could even be some dry people in here tonight <gasps> revival church dry people in revival It's like, poof, dust just flies everywhere, you know. You pat them on the back. Love you, brother. Poof, dust just flies everywhere. Say, <laughs> so, well, bless God, I know where my well is. Yeah, but it's stopped up. I don't mean you, sister. Stopped up well. Stopped up wells don't do you any good. Knowing where the wells are, knowing that your dad dug, well, my dad dug the well, bless God. I said, Shonda in 1973, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'll prove it to you, Shonda. Now, I'm just, I'll just be honest, there's people that think like that. They say, well, bless God, I speak in tongues. I must be full of God. Well, Maybe. Let's see the rest of your walk. Let's see the rest of your conversation. Let's see how you treat mom and dad. Let me get over here and say that. Let's see how you treat mom and dad. Greg, take out the garbage before you go to school. Greg's response is going to tell me something about whether his well is stopped up or not.
Praise and worship, another response. Talking about your well being stopped up. You know, your well can get stopped up little by little. The enemy would go and take rocks and just begin to fill that hole up. And at first, you know, the water level would come up. Look, ooh, the well doing good. Got the water level up. No, the devil's got rocks in your well. You just, they're under the, they're under the surface. Any, you ever met anybody has got things under the surface? Dear God, they look good. That's why Paul said, lay hands on no man suddenly. I just feel an anointing to come over here and say that to the front row. Lay hands on no man suddenly. Why? Because some some people sin, precede them by reputation. Others are hidden under the surface. Well, they look Holy Ghost. They got a Holy Ghost haircut. They carry a spirit-filled Bible. Says so on the cover but their well stopped up. They're dusty. <laughs> Dust. Well, I laughed during the Rodney Howard Brown revival. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> dry. You can be dry people. You know why? They let their well get stopped up. Thank God Isaac knew where to get go to the well. But I want you to know right here, he's digging his dad's wells up. And that's okay for starters. But there's going to come a time where you're going to have to dig your own well. Thank God for Sunday. But on Monday, you're going to have to dig your own well. Now, if you come out here Monday morning at 542, there's a lot of people digging their own well that can help and encourage you. But I'm talking about in the day-to-day walk, you have to learn how to dig your own well. If you're going to flow in the spirit of perpetual revival, you cannot make it from Tim Story till next Tim Story meeting or from Joyce Meyer. She won't be, honey, she won't be back for a year. You have to know how to dig your own well if you're going to stay in the spirit of perpetual revival because I guarantee you one morning, at least one morning this week, you're going to wake up and you will not feel too spiritual. You will feel like the well's been stopped up with a big boulder. That's why sometimes this morning was kind of like that. We had a breakthrough in the praise and worship realm this morning. But when we came up, it just looked like people's boulders were stopped up. You know, they couldn't quite get there. Spirit of perpetual revival. Verse 19. Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. They found the living water. They found a place where there was something fresh. Thank God for dad's well. Thank dad, thank God for mom's well. But I want to dig my own well. Thank God for Rodney Howard Brown's well. Thank God for Tim Story's well. Thank God for Pastor Bob Nichols' well. But I have to dig my own well. I have to learn how to tap into the flow and how to find the living water day by day if I'm going to stay fresh. Now, come on, you be honest with me. Some of you maybe even tonight, but you come into church sometime and you're dry, you're dusty. And I'll tell you what, dry, dusty people tend to repel the anointing before they soak up the anointing. You ever try to, you ever try to wipe up a spill with a towel that was just real dry? I mean, at first you're just wiping that stuff around. It's like it's never going to sink in there, but finally it gets in. And when the little moisture gets in that rag, the quicker picker upper. Isaac's servants dig the, dig the well. Now, I, I just want to say this right here. You know, the, it didn't say right now that Isaac is on the trail of some fresh manna and some living water. He says his servants dig the well. And I just say this, those around you can dig all the, all the wells that they want. And while you're with them, it might be good. Some of that will rub off on you. But you cannot depend on your parents' salvation. You can't depend on yesterday's manna. And you cannot depend on your friends because your friends may not always be there. But I guarantee you, if you will learn how to dig into the wells of salvation for yourself, you can tap a flow of the Spirit of God for your life. 
And that's where that spirit of ease that we've been talking about comes on you. It's because it's by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm getting fresh water today. I'm getting some fresh oil today because I've learned how to tap into something for God. And I've got to do that for myself. My husband, if you're a wife, your husband can't do that. My wife cannot do that for me. I must be hungry for myself enough to step out of this natural realm and press into the spiritual realm. It takes time to dig wells. It takes time to dig wells. Thirsty people are the only people that are going to dig a well like this. Verse 20, we're going to find the first hindrance to the well digger right here. And the herdmen of Gerard did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, the water is ours. That just sounds like some church group, doesn't it? I said, no more. We the only true revival church. We're the only ones reaching out to our city. We're the only ones in the Metroplex. Be like God told the prophet, no, I have 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. He says they did strive, and they said the water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek because they strove with him. There's, there's the first rock that the enemy wants to throw in your well. Strife and contention. No, that's bad, Tom. Good Strife is bad. Well, you're right. Thank you for straightening me out. Okay. <laughs> Tell you, I set your ministry ahead years. This was one revelation. Strife is the first rock, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you who will throw it, who will throw that rock into your well is the spirit of offense. Offended. I'm offended by that. Some people are easily offended. You know, offenses come, but you don't have to take them. I mean, people are not always going to treat you just like you want to be treated. And I'll tell you that... People, are, people, let me tell you, the hardest spirit of offense probably to break is when somebody did something that was ugly and you didn't deserve it because your flesh nature will want to help throw that rock in the well because it, it feels good to hear it go kaplunk. Before long, you're throwing a lot of rocks in there. Well, you know what they said to me. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't ever think that they were that anointed. <laughs> you know, I don't even know if they're saved. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some things that, that have offended people. That are, that are really silly, but they're all really silly. They're all really silly. When you consider the damage it does to you as an individual, it's poison. Tom Luther said. Verse 21, And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. <laughs> There's another thing that blocks a lot of people as well. They just like to sit around, you know. <laughs> Ooh, that was weak. And he removed from thence and digged another well. Now, let me tell you what that word means. Though. That word means hatred. The first well was just, it was strife. It was contention. There was friction there. But you know what the next well was? It was hatred. It was out and out hatred. A fence always moves to... To levels, it tends to generalize in your life. And he removed thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. 
And he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Verse 24, the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he builded an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And Isaac's servants digged a well. I'm telling you, that has got to be our mode of life right there. We dig our own wells. We build the altar. We dig a well. We build an altar and we dig a well. We worship God for ourselves. Folks, when you come into this house, you've got to come with a determination that when the praise of God begins, you are going to press through because I'm telling you, the enemy will, will cloud your mind. He'll throw rocks in your well and he'll have you thinking about every other kind of thing and the worship of God becomes tainted with the cares of this life and you can tell when there is that mix when we do not come into, a, into a, an area, an arena of worship of God, but it is in that corporate worship at the altar of God that there is a release of an anointing that overrides those things. There is a river that is flowing and it has been flowing since the initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We are not moving from season of revival to season of revival. We are moving simply into the presence of God and when we come and we allow the things of the earth to be cast aside, we will move into that manifest presence because the river is flowing. Now, there, here's a, herein lies a problem. This is something that stops up the well. I have pictured that river as water most of the time, and, and that's typically what we think of. But I was watching a program one day on Channel 13 talking about volcanoes. And lava also flowed, and it looked like a river. When that volcano first erupts, there is molten lava, melted rock and minerals just pour down the side of that volcano. But if you wait for a while, the top of that thing cools off and crusts over. It cools off and crusts over, and it looks like the flow is gone, but it is only hidden. Because I saw that guy get over there, and somehow they broke open that, a hole in that flow, and you could see it. There was a torrent right under where they were. And I'm telling a lot of you right here tonight, for one reason or another, you're not in a daily flow of revival. You're not lear you have not learned how to tap into that fruit of the spirit of joy. And you're right on the edge. Every service. I mean, it's like you can, you can see it. You, can, you, you desire it. You can almost step into that, but it's just not quite there. Trying to. The well's been stopped up. If you take somebody who's flowing in perpetual revival... They are, they are moving into a flow of worship. There ought to be a flow of worship in your life beyond Sunday morning, Sunday night, Thursday night. That's why I tell you guys that you should develop along with your library of whoever. You need to develop a hunger for praise. I mean, I, I enjoy Christian radio like the next person. But there is a higher realm. There is a higher realm for your life. And I'm telling you, one of the key factors that's going to keep you moving in a spirit of perpetual revival will be the atmosphere that you create in your home and your automobile. The praise of God. There's an altar there. And where you find that altar, you're also going to find that there is a spring of living water.
So here's what I want to come against tonight. Because it's so quiet in here at First Baptist Church, Fort Worth. Some of y'all are crusty tonight. Some of you experienced the touch of God like you wouldn't believe. And in the last two years, you're still looking for somebody else as well. Telling you, you've got to dig your own well. Man, yeah, I'm, I, it is. It's rolling because some people are waking up. Listen, we're, we're out where we live. The shallowest wells are about 380 feet. A oh, well's about 380 feet. That's a long way down. So I couldn't live there unless I'd gone to the expense of tapping that well. You've got to have water. You go out west of Fort Worth here, you pass Weatherford, there's a huge commercial building. And on the side of the building, it says, Hydrate or Die. Hydrate. Drink water, rehydrate. Hydrate. And that's, listen, drink or die, exactly. And that's my message to the church tonight. Hey, church drink or die drink or die how many times do we have to hear the prophecy that in the end time you're going to have to have the joy of God you're going to have to be able to tap into the joy for yourself before we will get out there and bless God get our pick and shovel or whatever it takes and begin to dig a well for ourselves I'm telling you, this church has been given so much, but to, to whom much is given, much is required. And that's why, that's why I'm crying from the rooftops, church, grow up, put down a fence, learn come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, to be a person who has a well of his or her own. You're not dependent on somebody else to spoon feed you and stick the bottle up to you, but you're somebody who has the gumption enough, the determination enough, the hunger enough to dig your own well. I'll tell you one of the, one of the greatest signs, thank you, just slap me all over with that. One of the greatest signs of, of weak baby Christians is this. They won't feed themselves, but they want to cry all the time. Now, this, this is going to hurt, so brace yourself. I'm just telling you that right now. Charlie, I can't pay the rent money again. Charlie, you, you know, it's been six months now. Well, bless God, I, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a job. Dear God, my marriage is falling apart. <laughs> Have you prayed about it? It hasn't got that bad. I want you to pray for me. That is cold, but it's the truth, bless God. Let me, let me ask you a question, Mac. Who's, whoever, whoever told you that God hired the staff of this church to do your praying for you? <laughs> dig in yourself. I like to dig in yourself. Yeah, dig your own well. That's what I'm going to start calling people. It's going to be on my, it's going to be on my tape. Hello, this is Calvary Cathedral Youth Ministry, Conquerors Club International, Young Married Couples. Have you dug your own well? 
when you dig your own well, call back. You know, sometimes I think I just like to listen to the tape machine. You know, you have, I know y'all don't monitor your, your calls, but I do. To see, is there any ring of faith there? Do I want to pick this phone up? Now, I'm not talking about people having an emergency. You know, that's, we're, we're available 24 hours a day around here. I mean, I leave mine on. I, if, I, if I don't have it on me, it's on beeper mode because I feel like somebody could have an emergency. We want to be there. We want to be there. But on the other hand, just help me preach this. Turn to somebody and say, dig your own well. I'm trying, I'm trying to help you all tonight. I'm trying to help you tonight. Good. I'm trying to help. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. You really encouraged me. Good to have you here. I thought you were going to be gone. I don't know why. Listen. Let me, let me, can I just explain something to you? The river of God does not come to Fort Worth with Rodney Howard Brown. And, and here's, here's one, here's one that, well, bless God, what happened to the joy? I got mine. I, 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 I sunk my own well. What happened to your joy? I'm telling you. I like, I like watching the praise singers. Oh, boy, I'm really getting in deep now. I'm getting deep. I'm going to come over here. I like watching the praise singers because some of them, you know, they're going to lead us into the high praises. But they, some of them, every now and then, one of them, every now and then, okay? So I'm not just getting down on everybody because I'm about to hit the youth and singles here in just a minute. But every now and then, you'll see one of them, man, it looks like their well been stuffed full. They're leading us into the high praise like this. You know, I'm going to dance, 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 dance. Now, you know, I know we have some tough days. I've had a tough day or two in my time. But you know, there comes time where we just have to, we just have to say, look, I'm going in there tonight and I'm taking whatever the enemy's stuck in my well to block it up. I'm getting rid of it right now. Getting rid of it. I'm going to hang on here for a second because I promise to get the youth. I like this. <clears throat> We're going to test that spirit of offense. I had a young person come to me once this. You're going to love this. <clears throat> Didn't come to this. Come to one of my assistants. Said, said, you know, Mark doesn't want our, doesn't want our youth, doesn't want the youth dancing during praise and worship because he, he really wants us to be dignified. So, Y'all, y'all should not respond. You know, I'm up on my phone. Oh, God, bless God. Jesus touched my life, changed me, set me free from the opinion of man. You know, so I can just be me and be myself. He's working on me. And I said, yeah, that's, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm up there. <laughs> I just refuse to let anybody stick any rock down my well. I refuse to do it. Let me just let me just ask for a show of hands. How many of you know there's a few rocks in your well? I mean, you just know there's a few rocks in your well. How many of you just like to really experience that fresh oil anointing? And I mean, just break into that break into that dimension. Some of you, you know, it might be going back and digging up the well. 
because those were some good wells. I mean, I'm glad Isaac digged up his dad's wells. I said, I'm glad he digged up his dad's wells. There's some wells we need to go back to. There's some wells we need to revisit. There's some new wells that need to be dug. Some of you need to dig an oil well, bless God. I mean, you gotta have a, you gotta have your own supply of fresh oil. So give me a musician. I'll take, give me a musician. I'll take any. Would you rather Johnny come? Okay. You're going to take a walk. Here, give me your hand. I was meaning for you to play the piano, but you're you're dangerous. <laughs> now, I I just this was a spur of the moment thing, but a lot of these people are looking to see if something's going to work. Now, I'm picking on Kevin right now because I know the man digs his own well. I see him up there at the piano. Sometimes he gets so drunk that he can't even play the piano. Do we pay him on the night that he's drunk like that? <laughs> I hope so. They got to make a living. <laughs> But I'm, I'm telling you, we can, we can step, we can step out right now. <laughs> no, I'm, he's digging, digging deep. You know, I'll tell you who needs a, I'll tell you who needs a fresh transfusion of the oil of the Holy Ghost more than anybody else in this, in this church is the staff. Because, let me tell you why. Because your oil gets burned up. The oil gets burned up quicker by use than anything else. <laughs> Some people, don't clap, don't clap, don't clap. Some people, some people, listen. <laughs> Uh, see that line right there? <laughs> Some people just evaporate. They're not using anything, you know. They just evaporate. Come here, you're not finished yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some help. Ms. Kubner, I want you to come up here and help me. Uh, listen. Listen. If it takes me till one o'clock this morning, I am going to take care of every crusty Christian in this place who has a desire. Hey, Carl, come here for just a minute. Settle down. Not her, him. She's going to help me minister. You're on your own, lady. Okay. We're going to pray for you right now. Not because you're dried up. Because obviously you're not. But there's a breakthrough coming in the music ministry. God had to find a man who would flow in this anointing. And there's a breakthrough coming in your ministry. When the enemy filled your well, you had the sense to dig it back up. So Holy Ghost, I pray a new and a fresh anointing upon him. I thank you, Father God. Here it comes. Here's the wave. Here's the first wave. That's the wave of salvation. Here's the second wave. It's the wave of healing. Because like we've seen salvations come during the midst of the praise and worship, we're about to see healings break out all over the auditorium. And there's going to be days that we have to, we have to stop everything to receive testimonies because they'll pop all over this house. Of course, it'll have nothing to do with you. It's the Holy Ghost.
Here comes wave three. Thank you. Now I'm I want somebody who you you just dry. Don't don't leave, lady. You're 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 gonna help me, Miss Huebner. I'm picking on her because she was totally blitz drunk out of her mind. I need I need I need somebody that says I've had the well before, but it's it, I've got to dig the well. I need somebody. Lady, you come back over here. I'm gonna get you in just a minute. Step out in the aisle. You like this. You just want more of it. Is that right? Okay, raise your hand. Go lay hands. Go lay hands on her belly. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna break some people through. I'm telling you, some of these some of these cases just take a little bit more. Help her, Jesus. I mean, help her, God. Dear Lord, this lady needs help, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Break her free. I've never seen anybody laugh like that without making any noise. This woman is laughing. Some help you have been. I mean, I want some, let me have somebody who, I mean, you, you were there, but you, you, months, boy, you haven't seen smiling. I mean, you got, you got a well that, come here, Mr. Praise and Worship guy. Dr. Putnam will be of no help to you. Raise your hand, close your eyes, lift both legs. <laughs> God help this man. I can understand why this man needs help. I worked with his dad for a year and a half. God, I pray, renew him. Tell you what, you save somebody's ministry like that. Give me, give me two more people, just real quick. Two people, just step in the aisle, and then we'll pray for everybody who wants it. But, you, but tell you what, let, before somebody stands up, I'm going to look at this. You see what this is right here? Let me give me a Bible. I, I got to illustrate this. See this? Here's the church. You know why we go through levels? If this revival never had this, you'd never keep your hunger stirred up for God. There comes, a, there comes critical points in every revival where the revival will either die and people will begin to say, well, I guess it's over, or they're going to get hungry again. They're going to get hungry again. They're going back to the prayer room. 
They're going to say, no, I've come too far. I've dug too many wells. I took too much time to find the place of the joy of God. And I am going to keep the well open. I am not stopping at this point but I am going on with God. I don't care how dry it may seem. I don't care if every friend I have got goes back. I am continuing to move with the spirit of revival. It is perpetual revival because it's eternal like God. And I will not be stopped or hindered. I am going to... Glory to God. Church, I am talking about us. I'm talking about us needing to shake off some dryness and dust off some things and say yes to the joy of the Lord and say yes to God and to continue to move in the things that God has introduced us to. I am determined, bless God, that I am not going back to who or what I was Whatever and however God has changed me, I'm going to continue in the flow. I'm not giving up the fight. I am going to fight for my children. I'm going to fight to let this anointing be transmitted beyond me. If Jesus tarries, I want every one of our young people to be touched and marked by the Spirit of God. Because bless God, if you and I pass on from this generation, those children in that nursery have got to know how to transfer the anointing of God to those generations that will come until Jesus comes back and we live and dwell perpetually in this anointing. I'm telling you, there is a price to pay for Pentecost, but it is worth every effort to keep your wells free and clear from the enemy's trash. I'll let no sin beset me. I'll let no negative attitude. I'll let, let no dry, crusty Christian get in the way of keeping the wells flowing, praise God. I'm going to take every morning that I get up, I'm going to break up that crustiness that's come on me. I'm going to say, let it flow, God, like a river of lava, like a hot boiling oil, because God... Yeah! Yeah! The fire of God burns out the trash, burns out the trash, burns out the trash. I say you'll never be the same from this night forward, regardless of what's happened in the past. The past is past. It's through a new joy, a new level of anointing in the name of Jesus. Now that's a heavy word. I'll tell you, that's a heavy word. I love everybody. But I'm telling you, as a corporate body, we have got to come back to the place where I'm willing to yield to the flow of the Holy Ghost. Come what may, whatever He tells me to do, I'm going to do it for His glory. And if you consider me a fool, then praise God, I'm a fool for Christ. At least I'm His fool. Now, if you're offended, I'm sorry. Get the rock back out of your well. God's going to heal you. I care about us moving into the fullness of what God has for us. I care too much. I've prayed too many prayers. I've stood too many times when only faith, dear God, when only faith was the only thing I could stand on concerning the church, concerning the young people. And I am not about to take seven, eight years worth of investment and pitch it. I am saying more of God. God, what do you have on this Bible? It's like oil anointed on it or something. Listen, let's pray. I want, I want to pray. We're going to pray for everybody who says, I need the freshness of the Holy Ghost. I want to break over. I want to come back. Telling you about the devil. Liar. I hate that lie of the devil. It says it's getting too good. Can't go any further. Listen, I want you, if you want to come, we're going to line you up. And if you want it, come. If not, go home. You'll make it in time for the next.